All right, let's make a formal introduction for our listeners. Uh, good afternoon, Lance. My name is Claudia. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., from the Suez of Fairfax City. We are very humble and grateful that Lance Austin also accepted our invitation to the show. Uh, yeah, Lance, welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I was very honored that you that you asked me. Oh, no, no problem. You found me, in fact. <laughs> we found you, yeah. We'll, know, we'll, tell, <laughs> we'll tell more about that during the interview. <laughs> Let me ask at the beginning, I mean, which came first, the, the art or the music? Or, you know, one, I suppose, fit the other, or feel free to elaborate. All, all my questions are open-ended questions up here to listen. I'm like a psychologist, Lance. Whether you want to elaborate 30 seconds or three minutes, I will... I will listen to you on a recording interview. Well, don't let me ramble on too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the 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 the, uh, the visual arts, the paintings uh, came first. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I went to uh, an art school in England. It was one of the top three in Europe called Camberwell Art School, and it had a lot of um, really excellent uh, artists teaching there, and. Um, Quite a number of them became quite famous. One of them, Frank Auerbach, who was one of my painting teachers, his paintings sell for millions. He's about 94 uh, now, but still working slowly. Uh, but that's really where it started. I, uh, I left school at, uh, at 15 and then just, I, I really had no idea what I was going to do. I, I was kind of lost. And the art teacher at the school said to me, well, of course you're going to art school. And I said, art school? They have schools for this stuff. I thought, boing, goes the, the the light bulb on my head. I don't have to get a job. I can go to art school. And I and I'd always liked drawing. So they made an appointment for me, and I showed up with some, you know, a bunch of scratchy old drawings and one big, big old painting that I'd done. And uh, they accepted me at the school, much to my surprise. And so I, I spent five years there. It was, it was great because it put me around people who um, were interested in what I was interested in, you know, girls, beer, art, you know. <laughs> Pizza, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was, you know, for, for, a, for a young guy who was sort of lost, really, like most people at 15 are lost, and, and, you know, you don't know what, what the heck you're going to do. You know, you just assume something's going to come along or not so it was it was really it was really quite good and uh, i um i got a lot out of that i left left there when you know well it was five years later so you know, i was about 20 when i left and uh shortly after that i got married when i was 23 i got married and then moved to canada and, you know, and I just lived a relatively ordinary life. I just would work on my paintings and I'd, you know, look for a, a job here, a job there when we first got, you know, just to pay the rent and stuff like that. You know, pretty much like anybody else does. You know, I mean, the one thing we learned at art school was that, you know, that you, uh, one out of a million will walk out and suddenly become famous. The rest of us just have to keep working like everybody else for the rest of your, your life on things. And I uh, I'd always viewed um, what I did really as, uh, you know, as, as my job. You know, I don't sit there, uh, you know, waiting for some form of inspiration, cleaning brushes and things. I mean, that's complete nonsense. I mean, the inspiration comes from actually working. You know, so you, I think it was, it was an American artist, Chuck Close, once said that inspiration is for, is for amateurs. The rest of us get, just get up and go to work every day. You know, walk out to the studio, you get your stuff and you start working. And 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 from what you're doing, something may or may not, but eventually comes, you know. But, you know, the idea of sitting there going, well, when I have an inspiration, I'll paint something is is, is, is really quite foolish, you know. You just work every day and um, things things come, you know, things develop. Yeah. But in the general music, <clears throat> Les, were you born like in a musical family at all? Were you a guy that, you know, you your parents put you to, you know, to play guitar or piano or any mm, anything no, like that? No, no. None of that at all. It was very. It was, it was really quite interesting because I. <clears throat> it was in nineteen. I mean, I'd always listened to sort of all kinds of weird things. I mean, I was very interested in um, uh, Friedrich Jorgensen. You know, it was a very interesting dude that was recording, you know, the, 
sounds of dead people and things like that. I always found this sort of quite fascinating because I thought, well, why, why would anybody do that? And then I'd listen and go, well, that's, that's very interesting, you know. Anyway, and between that and the jazz and the blues and things that I'd listen to, this was just mostly what I listened to. I mean, was a, there was a few sort of uh, uh, pop music, but not very much, you know, because I, I didn't have a radio at the time and I just... I pl played all my old, I say all my old blues records and things like this. Anyway, when I went to work at the art gallery in that art rental thing in 1996, I met this young guy, Jamie Druin, right? And we sort of became friends and I had a look at his portfolio of photographs. I thought, holy moly, these are good. You know, I got him a, I got him a, a show. And um, a couple of years later, he said to me, you know, he says, I think we should do some sound performances there's nothing going on like this in this town i said sound performances but i i said I don't actually play anything in a in a regular sense um and i had been working on this series of engravings i've got a plate here you know i had a whole bunch of these yeah. whole bunch of copper plates okay and i was doing dry point engravings and he said to me, he said, well, look at this. He says, this is, a, this is a piezo mark, Mike. He said, what happens if you stick it on this? So I've got some tape and I stuck it on that thing. And I, I said, Don't. again, the light bulb. I said, holy moly. And I moved this thing around. I said, well, that is really interesting, you know. And I thought, hmm. Uh, I began to sort of see it as, well, it's the same as painting, you know, suddenly to me. And, and you know, I, I come out here, I've got five tubes of paint and, a, and I put it up there and it's kind of a mess. And I move it around here and I put something there and I move it around. And during the day, suddenly, you know, something will come from what is originally just these three or four tubes of paint. And I thought, well, if I approach the sound in the same way, because, I, you know, there are sounds everywhere. If I can start finding all these minimal sounds, all kinds of sounds and, and approach it the same as a painting, think about it in terms of, you know, this is raw material and, you know, it needs to be spaced in specific ways, you know. And that's really where I first started with it was because he decided that we were going to do performances <laughs> just right out of the air. And, of course, I, I've always been one that said, well, sure, I can do that. You know, just you know, give me a time and I'll work with things and, and something will happen. You know, you, 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 yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh -huh. Well, it was a bit like, uh, you know, when I first saw my younger daughter doing, uh, the, you know, the first uh, Olympic length triathlon race, right? And she, at the end of it, she comes out and she says, well, what do you think, Dad? And I said, well, shit, I could do that. <laughs> I'd thrown the glove down, right? And so what did I do? I spent, I spent five years doing triathlon, triathlon racing, which was, was, was great. Unfortunately, I, I, I'd started at 59, which is a little late you know, to, 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 to become really that good at, uh, 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 at racing when they're all 20-year-olds. But it was, it was just that was my kind of attitude. But, you know, I can, yeah, I can do this. You know, let me, just let me think about this and, and listen. And, and this is really how it came. I started listening to all kinds of sounds, going out recording, field recordings, you know, ants, um, things cars going by rain uh you know tin cans being kicked around beer cans and all of that you know i began to realize that okay here's all the raw material and if i approach it in exactly the same way as i approach a painting i just come out each day and i start working and you know, i'll work with this sound and that sound and then almost going back and doing the score afterwards because what i would have is maybe five or six hours of stuff okay raw material and in that i'd suddenly go oh there there it is and i take that and then i begin to think about the spacing you know the quietness and and, and the you know the harmonics of it how how it's going to work how you know how is it working for me exactly the same way as i worked with paintings and that's really how it's come about. And I've just added things, you know, harmonicas and tape recorders and half broken guitars and all kind, you know, things I've made with piezo marks and boxes and rubber bands. And, and, you know, I use all of these things to, to basically um, generate the kind of sounds I want. But of course, without computers, we would be in trouble in this kind of thing, because the thing is you can, 
you can actually sit there with it on your lap and you can and you, and you can actually edit all this stuff. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to go and rent a huge studio and you go, oh man, I got to be very careful because this is costing money. But since I'm not charging myself anything, I can do absolutely anything and find something in there. You 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 mentioned thank you. You mentioned something very interesting. You mentioned cloud is it's sound everywhere. Well, there's color texture paintings everywhere, but it, how, the the question is how. What goes with what? You know how you put it together. You know, for example, right? If to your behind you to your right, right, is a painting with you know green and uh, kind of brown and, and and gray and so forth. So, mm. how do you know what? How do you know what what goes with what or what should go with that one? Well, okay, because you you mentioned okay, I. I mess around with this and that, and eventually I have two hours or something, right? Let's call it music. Well, it's, it is music, right? It's not pop music, it's not rock music, but it's music. How do you know that, well, I like the 10 seconds, the, the next three minutes, I don't like it, I will remove it, and then to, in an hour from now, I did something interesting, I will glue it together. How how, how, what, how do you figure out what, what the end process or the end product should be? Well, there's the, uh, there's the rub. Um, it's it's it is almost an in instinctual thing, you know. I mean, I've I've always been, uh, you know, again starting with painting and drawing, very very interested in in spacing, you know, in the quiet and the sound, the quiet and the sound, or the you know the the nothing and the something, the nothing and the something. I've always really found very interesting, and I you know, and I, and I find the same thing in in the sort of the poetry that I that I like to read, you know, it 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 doesn't jam everything at you, you know. It's very difficult to explain. It, it is. It really is a process of of. Um, I mean, I have notions, right? And very often, um, I'll have an idea, and I'll get something down really quickly. Okay, and that then may lead on to something completely different. You know, generally it does. You start off with this sort of, oh, I've got this idea. And then by the time you get to this other side here, it's it's got nothing to do with this at all. It's become something else that, that came through you, that you while you were doing this, while you were moving this, listening to that, playing with this, it, it suddenly gave you this, wow, yes, moment, which you then follow. Now, I'm not sure how much sense that makes, but this is really, it is how it works for me. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very abstract process. You know, my, my paintings are all, I used to be a figure, figure of painter and I can draw perfectly well, but, you know, mostly my work is abstract. You know, I mostly work with the paintings. I, I'll work with, with giant brushes, like from the hardware store and put it in. And I may come in, I put three, you know, this is like 90, 90 inches long, almost, you know, eight feet, nine feet three sheets of paper and I, you know, I may come in and just look and see what, oh, there's that green there. I'll use that, put the brush in it, run right across the whole thing like this and then just sort of go in and have a cup of coffee or something, you know, come out a couple of hours later to see what has developed because it's run and it's moved and it might come out and go, interesting, you know, and then I make the next move on it. Um, I think you mentioned that you have... Uh done like a 56 or over 50 uh you know different uh, compositions so far how you is do you do you sort of go back and forth between the the, the painting side of you and the music side of you you go one week you're tired of drawing painting and you go back to music and then after music five days you go back to painting you do that how how in your head you're able yes, to i i do do that and and uh, one of the interesting things is that you know if i find that, that i'm looking at or listening to something and it's starting to sound too much like something that i've already done you know hmm. now i don't believe that one should be trying to do something different every 15 minutes right but you know if something sounds like a a much more polished up version of something that you already did. And this applies for paintings too. And this is one of the great dangers for artists. And particularly if they start getting paid a whole bunch of money for something, and that is sticking with what I call their logo or their style. 
you know, and not moving too far from it. And so you, you'll have a look at something that was done, you know, yesterday and then something that was done 10 years ago. And the one that was done yesterday looks like the one 10 years ago, except it's, it's shinier. You know what I mean? So what is kind of nice for me is that if, if I find that's, you know, that's happening, I say, oh, I've done, I've seen this p- painting before. I've got to stop here. I'll just go and start working on, on sounds, you know, work on that for a while. And then the same thing there. If I suddenly go, you know, you're getting a bit repetitive here. It's time to just drop everything and go do something else. So that back and forth is actually is actually uh, very very helpful for me. You know, yeah. it's, it's me getting stuck. I mean, I do work in in sets and series. You know, I mean, I'll do a series of recordings and they're based on a similar notion, maybe two or three albums. And then I'll move off. You know, so I don't just go, well, I've done this. I'm never going to do it again. That's kind of silly i mean it's like an artist saying well i've used red never going to use that again yeah <laughs> you see what I'm saying? yeah no i know what you're saying yeah so for me i was telling you before that i really love <clears throat> uh kind of uh space electronic music uh bands like um i don't know tangerine dream or klaus schulze or mm-hmm. manuel goshin and so on so forth you know and um uh you know the people that did uh, Popol Vuh that did the m- m- music for um, uh, Bernard Herzog um, soundtrack, right? So, uh, but the the kind of ambient, and then more well, more the, in your case, your experimental music, it require a different kind of set of mind, if you will, to to capture the stuff at the beginning. You know, I, some years ago when I started listening to experimental music, it, it took me a while to to try to understand the meaning of stuff uh, and try to. I, I'm an engineer, right? I'm a computer scientist, so I've always tried to make sense of the world, if you will, right? And uh, yeah. everything I do, right? Because I, I'm I was trained that way, right? I'm not an artist at all. I'm kind of very logical in my, in my approach to do anything. And, and I, with experimental music, I was listening and listening to listening. Uh, it takes me a while to get my 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 head, you know, around it. Maybe I'm approaching the stuff incorrectly, or maybe that's what it is. It's, it's, it's experimental. It's no, you know, it's not a pop track. It's not jazz. It's not rock. It's not electro music. What was wh- who are the, who you think the the average folks that that listen to your stuff? Who who you fell in there? Your employer to who's buying your music, for example? Gosh, I I really don't know. It seems to varieties of people buy the stuff. Yeah, it was interesting what you say because I I see I think that you know the the painting and working with the sounds and that is really my way of making sense of of my world. <laughs> you know, and it's it's almost like. You know, I see, you know, paintings over the years that have gone by almost like, you know, my sort of footsteps through the world. You know, it's the same footstep, but it changes as as everything changes, you know. And uh, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that there's any sort of r- uh, right way of, uh, of of listening to things. You know, you, you, I mean, you listen and I mean, the things I, that, that I listen to and, and they're, uh, they've sold hundreds or thousands of very popular. I go, why? I mean, it's the same. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, why, why? You know, and uh, yeah. another one of those things is why, you know? And so, and it, again, it relates back to the paintings, you know, that, that one is trying to, you're not sitting there trying to d- do something that's, completely original because i mean you'll you'll fail you know that's that's not how you approach it but you're you're working and you're trying to get you you to begin to show up in these things you know your notions of you know of of things you know your sort of uh, discovery of 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 the world i mean i think it was it was i think it was the field recordings that first sort of got me interested because i started to you know i've always um sort of listened outside i mean i've never walked around with headphones on i mean i i just don't do that and when we had the uh the uh hotel the small hotel my wife and i would get there at four o'clock in the morning because the first meals were served at six right 
And what was very, what I found very interesting, we never spoke because we knew what we were doing, but the, the the house, the old sort of building, would wake up, and you and there was all these wonderful sounds of this place waking up. And I always found that really quite fascinating, you know. And to a degree, that's how I approach, you know, the sort of sound work and things. Is is it's uh, it's a uh, almost like a not a specific narrative, but almost like you know the the movie that's in my head, and this is the soundtrack for what's going on now. You know, a lot of the uh, people that I've you know I've worked for, particularly, um, I've been doing quite a bit of work in the last couple of years with the Venezuelan Gil Sanson. You know, and I mean he's a trained uh, a musician and composer, and and I mean he he reads all the things that I can't read. I mean, I, I can't read notation and stuff like that. You know, I, I just, it, I just don't, but uh, he likes working with me. And uh, initially I, I, I really couldn't figure out why, but we just seem to, to, to just seem to have something that worked together. You know, he would send me something and I would go, oh, you know, and send it back and you go, ah, oh. and there was never any, explanation as to you know do this or why or what it was just yeah that that that's that works i wouldn't have thought of that but that's the right thing so you send but you send uh files back and forth and you add his piece then he said to you you add your piece and blah 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 and Some, eventually well, after a couple of weeks okay, yeah sometimes okay, I think some, sometimes we sometimes we do that but for example yeah. the last um the last thing we did which was on on uh, it was put out on a, on a um, thumb drive because it was uh, three CDs worth of work. And how that had come about is, you know, I work in this sort of studio, which is, you know, very small and I've got stuff everywhere in here. And um, I've been working on these sound and I began to realize, you know, that every time I touched them, I drew something, it was, I was recording it, touching pieces of paper, it was recording, moving this, it recorded. I realized that the whole sort of, score that I was working on was actually this building was that I was inside the score. So once I had that notion, I then took photographs in here and sent them to Gil. And I said, Gil, okay, uh, here we are. I'm, I'm, I'm producing the work here from the inside of the score. And I've sent you photographs so you can actually produce your pieces from outside of the score. And so we, we did not work together on these things at all, other than that notion this is what i'm doing and here's the photographs and it worked wonderfully man that's amazing i i don't have i don't have that kind of talent i mean i i i do certain stuff lance or i don't i mean um, like the difference between maybe an engineer or an architect right an architect can you know draw the stuff figure out and you know show you a drawing to a guy like me a buyer of a house whatever and i see i like it or i don't like it but if i try to draw it to see what i like i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to do it either i i need to be presented with a visual thing or a music type or a painting or whatever like like we talked before right so yeah. i i understand what yeah. i understand yeah, but with, without the engineer the architect yeah. building would fall down. <laughs> With, yeah, yeah. I'm no, like, you need both got to be there. One yeah, is but the does it stand up. Yes, it will stand up if you do this, 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 and this, right? Right. Yeah, but some people are very, very talented or figured out something like you, figured out something for nothing. Whatever nothing means, but I cannot do that. I, I, I need to be presented with the stuff. I can't believe that. And, and I think we, we talked before, I, in terms of art, um, I understand Monet, I understand Dali, but it, it baffled me that, you know, I, of course I've been in the majority of museums all over the world, and, and uh, you know, I see many Picassos in front of me, and it baffled me that people are willing to pay $15 million or $20 million. I, I don't understand it. I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong or, or it's not famous or whatever, but it's... It, uh, you know, well, the, yeah, the whole—I mean, the whole art world has become a you know just yeah. sort of a corporate shill, really. I mean, all, all, all the all the artists who who make a lot of money who are alive now, there's very few of them. You know, yeah. it's and you know, there, there's a few people make all the money because it's become um, almost like stocks and shares. You know, yeah, you know, 
they're not going to be allowed to fail. Now, with regards to Picasso, I mean, Picasso did so much and went in so many directions. I mean, his mind was really, really interesting. And, uh, you know, and I love a lot of his work, you know. I, I'm, I'm sort of baffled as why people will pay that kind of money, but it, it really does come down to, you know, well, I'm rich. I can afford to do it, so I'm going to do it. So see what I've got? Attitude. Yeah. Yeah. And and it just becomes this competition to keep more and more expensive, you know. I mean, look at poor old Vincent van Gogh. I mean, he made nothing in his life. He'd roll over in his grave if he saw all these horrible projected van Gogh things that the, the, the people are paying to go to see, you know, of, of all those wonderful paintings, you know, and thank God for his brother who saved everything. Saved the stuff, yeah. Yeah. And there was a, <laughs> there was a book written by... Um, what was it called? Anyway, it was called Lust for Life. They made a movie out of it. And it was written in the early 1940s. And when the author tried to get that book, and it was about Van Gogh, published, he had a hell of a job because the publishers would say, who the heck wants to read a book about an unknown Dutch artist? And that was just in the 40s. So, you know, yeah. it's like wow. it was that long ago. I was I was alive then. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that sometimes people, whatever, musicians, artists in general, they, they are not appreciating society at the time. Some people do, but other people don't, right? And come it on, takes another generation, two generations, whatever. And that guy, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, was very, very good, man. Why nobody is going down the way he ended up dying you know, poor or deaf or exactly. Or there's, there's, or whatever, you know. there's there's no reasoning for it. I mean, you know, one that's why one just just you just do your work. You know, you have to sort of believe in what you're doing. And you know, if you you sit there hoping that everyone else is going to think you're great and throw money at you, well, you're you're just an idiot. You know what 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 we do is like, like everybody else. I mean, I just get up in the morning and I if I, I don't feel like doing anything. Well, I. I watch TV, you know, <laughs> something. Um, if I, you know, but most of the time they'll all come out to the studio, even if I don't feel like doing it. And then once I once I get going, go, oh, you know, yeah, I I, I love doing this. You know, this is this is this is my story. And even if nobody understands it now, maybe they will later. Maybe not. Maybe all the stuff I've got will just come down, end up on a big bonfire. Well, I mean. I'd be dead, so how would I know? Why would I care? So, you know, again, the idea of um, working to be famous when you're dead is is also completely idiotic because how, how the hell would you know you're dead? You know? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Maybe, so maybe, as, maybe as an artist, musician, painter, sculpture, whatever, you have no choice. You, you need to, quote-unquote, need to do what you need to do, right? Some better, uh, I suppose, are easier than others. Some days you wake up at six o'clock in the morning, you cannot fall asleep, you go to the studio, and some days you say, no, oh, it's 10 o'clock, I don't want to go to the studio, I want to do my music thing, or I want to go for a walk, whatever, right? It's, uh, it's right, it's, uh, I suppose the, 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 the musician or the artist or the painter inside of you kind of push you, you know, today's a normal day, no, tomorrow's going to be whatever. You you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, you're doing that paint correct. brushes and... Well, sometimes yeah. I wake up and I go, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. get something I've been working on. Oh, and it just came to me. And yeah. I, I don't know where from. But I think it's, well, for me anyway, actually, I, I believe it should be the same for most people. But, you know, I think you, you need to live a, you know, a, a just, you know, just an ordinary life. You know, you just go out, you do dishes, you cook, you go see things, you go for walks and stuff like that. You know, you don't yeah. spend your, you know, an artist shouldn't spend their whole time hanging around with other artists all the time or musicians hanging around with other musicians all the time. I think that one needs to have a, a much wider grasp of what's going on around you. Mm. Some artists in general, some painters, some musicians, they don't want to, they're more introverted. They don't want to listen to other people's stuff or in your case, seeing other people work because they influence you on what you try to to do right it, it, that is 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 a safe statement i mean you you go to galleries you see other people's stuff you go to a museum um, 
Well, it doesn't well I, I, you know, I, 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 I've got books and things. There's, we don't where I live here. There's, there's really, you know, you know, there is a gallery, but you know, it's, it's all right. But this, 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 it's not like it was in Europe or in, you know, in New York or something. I mean, we just don't yeah. have any of that stuff. I mean, I'm aware of what's going on because I have been to these places, and I also, you know, I read a lot. I look at, uh, uh, you know, books of uh, people's work, see what, what they're up to, but. I mean, it's it's not it's it's not possible to 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 not be influenced by what's going on on around you. I mean, it, it simply isn't, you know. But you find your, your you find your way through this, you know. Yeah, no, you you can you can see somebody else's work or somebody else's gallery or be there, but at the end, you need to do what is more appealing to you, right? And then create your own lands you know side of the world if you will right lance's way of seeing his life or that's right well it's like I've, i you know i've said to sort of uh uh you know uh younger artists or also younger people i mean it's like yeah everybody walks the same way one foot in front of the other but it's but they're all different You know, so in that sameness, it's all different, and it's the same thing with with painting or anything else. You know, we all approach it the same way, but but it, it's our way, and so it's 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 different. Yeah, I mean, it has yeah. to be it, it it because you're a different person. Right. Uh, you your one the, the other album that you sent me and I listened to actually in Bad Camp and, and on the web, it's a new album with the Toronto musician uh, Tim Clement and and Ben Watson. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, it was released on the label in Frequency, which is yes. a very good name, actually. It's a good name for a painting. It's a name for a, for a book also in Frequency. Well, that's <laughs> how it, that's, that's, meeting yeah. those people. I mean, when when somebody, let's say, if I wanted to collaborate with you, how we how you get how people get in contact with you? They 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 kind of know your music <coughs> and they do samples <laughs> and uh, I'm working well, with, that with, with, to collaborate. With, 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 Yeah, with Clement, it was it was it was kind of interesting because I I've never met him, but I I have I have met his son and I've worked with his son because his son lives in Vancouver and I um, last couple of years ago I would go over there and record with him, you yeah, know, you know, and that's how I met his dad. Well, his dad uh, worked with a guy for years called Michael Daniel, who's won all kinds of Oscars for his you know Life of Pi music, all kinds of things he writes, and. You know, a couple of years ago, I said to Timmy, you know, are you interested in doing, uh, putting something together? He said, sure. You know, and I said, well, it's, it's all going to have just have to be file transfers because I'm not coming to, to Toronto. I mean, uh, it's difficult enough for me to get on a ferry and go to Vancouver. I just soon stay here, right? And so that's really how, the, and then this next one came along because I had, um, I thought, well, I haven't heard anything from, for a while. So I said, well, have you got anything, Tim? You know, send me something over. You know, and I'll I'll work with it. So he sent me a file, and I listened to it, and I thought, okay, I actually know what I want to do here because it, it's it, it was just it just sort of opened up something in me, and I had some things that I'd been working on that I thought these are work really nicely with this because it's sort of a get his his was very smooth and mine was very sort of jagged, so it, I felt that it would work really together. So I actually sat there and I with with the stuff that he'd sent me and i have no idea uh, what ben watson did on there because he worked with ben they just sent me the 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 actual uh, uh finished file that they had and i went into it and i took it apart and i put in what i thought was going to work with it layered it together you know did two separate tracks uh, two two different completely different things and sent them off to him you know and uh, he was very happy with them and that's really how that one came about yeah. wow that's great man I, uh, the other album that i really like it there are two actually i want to bring it to attention one is an kind of an old one well 219 what four years ago uh dark heart uh released in august 2018 what what memory do you have for you oh, have, that was... you have done done 56 60 or whatever it is. Can you can you remember a little bit of? You know, well, that one I remember because the the label is another Timber, which is a label in the UK, and it's it's together with um, John Abbey's erstwhile. It's oh. probably the best, the best experimental label in the world. Got it. I mean, yeah, 
it's fantastic. And so I was like, wow, you you got to release, you want to you want to release one of my things, and they'd released another one, an earlier one as well, you know, which was yeah. so it's really really quite an honor. And I had been working with um, a Norwegian uh, called Turje Paulsen. Okay, and again, I've never met him, but we're back and forth and back and forth, talking back and forth on on online. You know, and he's always like interested in paintings and things I've done. And he would say, wow, this one is kind of musical, isn't it? You know, which is how I got into the whole score thing, because people started to see the, the musicality of the way I laid out the paintings. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And Absolutely. so Turge sent me, he, he does a, a lot of field recording in Norway, which of course, and out there, it sounds a lot different from the field recordings that are done here. Yeah. You know, because a different place. Right. And he sent me one it was very interesting. He had some, uh, sort of uh, a little bit of guitar work on it but you know not not sort of playing the guitar but just it would be it would show up in, amongst all this wonderful sounds and i said i said that's yeah i like that i like that right and i said I, i'm not sure what to do with it yet so i sort of put it aside for a year and then i was working on some other things that i had sort of lined up and suddenly i went wow now that would work with what I've got of Turgis. So I pulled it out again, and, I, and then what I, I began to weave what I had into what I'd gotten from him a year ago, right? Yeah. And it and it began. It just began to work really well, and it it was just it was just sort of one of those sort of moments right and then it I, i'm not sure whether this this is the one i because i i did a couple of things using a sort of retired opera singer and you know i used a voice on a couple of things i i don't like to use them on too many things because otherwise they start because a lot of these singers all sound the same you know so use it for a little bit so i it, that i may or may not have used her voice on that just towards the end but Again, it's 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 a sort of a, a, a collage approach. Ooh. I had this wonderful thing by Turge. I was not going to mess it up, you know. But you know, he's perfectly happy with, with me to take things down or out or move them a little bit, you know, to to fit mine. It, it, it's, it's never a case of okay, here's what I've sent you. You can't touch it. Just add what you've done because that would never work at all, you know. But the idea of being able to 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 work like this and then send it back to him and then he's perfectly willing to say well I don't like what you did here or I don't like what you did there you know and sometimes that happens and then we just sort of go back and forth to see you know what it is that we need to make this recording you know, as it is you know absolutely no absolutely very the way you put it is very very excellent uh, it's another one uh, that is more recent May twenty eighth two thousand twenty three I think it's called the Pit Yes. Uh, PAT. Yeah, it's another very interesting stuff, man. Okay, the pit. That's interesting. Yeah. The the pit and the one before that, which yeah. I released was Lakeside Blues with um Gil Sanson, and then the one that's coming out with Tim Clement. All three of those are yeah. to a degree related because I was there was a there was a way that I was working that I sort of continued to do through each of them. But the pit was kind of interesting because I I was sitting out here and I thought, you know, you keep, you, you've, you've done all these things, you've layered this, you put this in, you've got all this wonderful sound going on. I think it's time for you to take all this stuff and throw it away and just start with one thing. So what should we do? So I'm sitting here with my beer. And I finished yeah. the beer, got the mic on, and I just, so it just started to crush the can. <laughs> yeah, and that was the first bit of it. And I went, that's it, just simple things. You know, then I had built a, um, I'd gotten this wooden box, put two uh, <coughs> piezo mics in it, <coughs> excuse me, and I had uh, these big rubber bands around it, and I had connected it to this one, I don't have too many uh, effects pedals, but I have one which is like a, a looper and does a couple of things which I use sometimes. And anyway, so I plug it and I, and I pulled these back and it sounded like a bass player. So I recorded that you know so this was really a work that i was very very happy with because i had taken out all the extraneous stuff and i just left right here's the beer can here's the tin foil 
you know, here's a little bit of the uh, sort of MIDI organ in here. You know, here's, you know, here's, here's, but they, but it was not all pile one on top of the other. It was, it, it, it had been opened out a little bit. So I was, I was very pleased with that one. You know, that was the one that came out in the, uh, the on the Japanese label. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Another, another question. Maybe somebody have asked this question before or make comment on that. Let's say. I didn't know you, right? And I didn't know you were a musician, right? And I only knew your painting, right? Somebody showed me a book or your painting, drawing, and so forth. I I would have been my life that you have been involved with music. The way, so the way that I see your visual artwork, painting, and collage, or whatever you do, uh, I, I would have been my life on it that you were maybe not a musician, but music was a very important part of your life. Um, the way that I am I'm able to uh, see your work. I don't know if I'm coming across. Oh, that's, I think that's very interesting. That. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I find the whole sort of painting thing, the way I do it now. I mean, when I was younger, I mean, I was just trying to do paintings the same as the people who are teaching me, you know, but when you sort of get, a, get away from that and, It almost become, you know, painting is almost like a dance to me. I mean, I always paint them on the wall. I mean, on this wall behind me, you know, with the things I've been working on, I mean, all the paint from the last sort of five years here, all tape stuck on the wall, it's all just there, right? But yeah. I, I have all my pots and things lying at the bottom with brushes and that, and I'll come in, put up three clean sheets of paper, and then it just becomes like a dance. You just pick up this and, you know, and then just leave it, you know, and then... Maybe again, you know. So it is. It is kind of like, and it is an almost an instinctual thing that you know. You know, it's almost like sound silence, like sound silence, heavy light sound. You know, so it does become like a, a sort of a, a musical thing. I mean, I don't think like that when I'm doing it. I don't know what I'm thinking about when I'm doing it. The idea for me is is, is if you're sitting there thinking about what you're going to do, that's when you end up with a big illustration. You know, the idea is it has to be, it comes from you. The stuff has already been put into your head and your body over years of doing it. So you don't have to think about when you bring the brush out, well, am I going to put it here or here or here or here? You know, it just comes out and you just put it where, it, where you put it. And it's, it's it, again, it, it's, it's almost like a, a dance, you know. And I, I, I do find that kind of a... a, a almost a, a musical approach to it. And, and people have commented on that, you know, and then the sort of layering of colors where you've got very thin. And so if you look at it, it's almost like these different um, levels going backwards and forwards, moving around, you know, so it's not just a flat thing, you know, this, 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 you know, it, it moves this way as well as up and down. Yeah, got it. Perfect. Um, so you, you end up, you know, finishing your art school and you got married and then you you thought, well, I need to start going on my own and do my own way of, you know, my own painting, my own sculpture, my own my own way of looking at the world, my way of looking at the world. And then in the 40s, you keep continuing, you become successful. Now you're going 60, 80, now you're, you're turning 80. Mm -hmm. it, it, it have changed, the art have changed from To you at all and your perception about the world and the reality and what you try to capture have changed a lot over time if i were, were to say seeing the stuff you were doing in the you know in the 20s and 30s 40 and have you kind of evolved in oh you know? yeah yeah i mean i was like like everybody else i was very angry when i was in my 20s you know <laughs> and, and i was Yeah, coming up out of, out of out of the UK at that early time, and we we we, we all loved loved Francis Bacon, you know, we paint all those twisted and bashed about figures and you know, like this, you know. But you know, you, I mean, as you as you sort of you know go go through life, I mean, all kinds of things happen to you, some good, some tragic, or whatever, and these all have an effect on. Okay. Yeah. On, on yourself, you know, and the, I mean, this is really, to me, the difference between, you know, illustrations of something and, and paintings. You know, I'm not trying to illustrate, I'm not trying to use the paint to illustrate some other 
idea or some other notion. You know, the painting mm. is the painting. That's what it is. It's not representing something else. You know, it is that. And the same thing with, you know, approaching the, the sounds and that. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, represent, you know, some other notion. I mean, what is there, that's what it is. What it's about is what you hear. That is what it's about. Yeah, you know, I, of course, can't, I can't explain that too much in words. As somebody once said, you know, talking about art is like tap dancing for architecture. You know, can you explain your building? Oh, yes, so hang on while I put my tap shoes on. You know, I mean, it's so, so talking about, <laughs> yeah. talking about these things is, it, it's just, it's just talk and it's very, it doesn't explain things particularly well. You, you, you know, I mean, you just try and put out a little bit of uh, the process, your approach to it. And what comes out at the end of that when you're doing it might have nothing whatsoever to do with what you just told somebody you were doing. Do you see what I mean? Right. It, it, if somebody were to come to you and commission you to a painting or 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 something for the living room or the house, or it, it wouldn't work because you like you do what you would like to do, not what somebody else would pay you. No, no, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, the closest that, that I've got, and that really isn't commission, actually, is that what this is just being put together now in the UK is a book coming out called Transposed Heads, which I've done with a guy called Donald Brackett, who teaches at Simon Fraser University and is a writer. And his um, his great uncle, um, Charles Brackett, was was um, Billy Wilder's partner writing all those great uh Uh, movies you know uh, in the 40s and 50s but yeah he was like interested in, in what I was doing his paintings right and then I started working on um sort of series of portraits but they weren't they weren't like you know look his his uh, it was just I was you know and then I put up this oh, yes, and put and he started to, to 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 name them He said, well, this, this reminds me of the author so-and-so. Then after about five of them, I sent him an email. I said, Donald, can you stop putting names on these, please? <laughs> I said, but would you be interested in, if I just continue doing this and then you find something, out, maybe we can do a project, put something together. Well, what happens? I do 130 portraits in two months, right? And all sort of different. And he finds things in them that he thinks represents a specific person, even if it's something that, that looks like one of their novels or something. I mean, I didn't tell him. And then he's, he sends me back these paragraph, 130 big pages of, of, of this wonderful text about these characters. And so this is really the closest thing I've ever got to doing something like that. And, and it came in a, in a natural way, you know, that I was just doing these anyway, and he was seeing stuff. I said, well, let's put the, the two things together, see if it makes any sense, you know. And then we found a publisher that thought it did. So, you know. Yeah, kind of. Although you, you do what you feel is more appealing to you, right? Art, music, in, in terms of art, any, and the same question goes for music is any, you look if your life, you know, the last 40 years or 50 or whatever, in the, You know, if I group the painting on one side and the music on the other side, any major influences that you say, yeah, I, I used to listen to that guy or I used to go to a particular gallery or that book. I'm always looking at the book because, you know, the following painters, whatever the names are happen to be, are were important in my life and the following musicians were important in my life. That are what I, um, I, I, I drawn to, to that kind of stuff or no? Well, there's, there's so many of them, you know, I mean, that that i that i like and and i guess uh, to a subliminal degree i guess some you know the, the, you know you influence i mean if you as i said to somebody the other day you know when he put, said to looked at one of my drawings he said oh it's like F philip guston in the fifth dimension and i i just said you know if you do enough drawings you, you're going to bump into everybody at some point you know yeah yeah so, uh, i mean you, you can't just sit there with working at, and it never touches anybody else on the planet i mean you know these things are all connected you know i mean the only reason that we can be artists is because there were artists before 
You know, this is not something we just invented out of nowhere. You know, we come based on sort of the traditions of, of hundreds and hundreds of years. And the same thing with, with the music. You know, it, it sort of creeps along and makes these little changes and additions and things like this, you know. With, uh, I mean, I was mostly, most of the, the music that I I really loved was, was um, well, I liked traditional jazz a lot when I was younger. And I really liked um, all of the uh, all of the old uh, American blues. I got lots of a collection of American blues, and uh, and I liked a lot of contemporary jazz. I mean, I loved I loved Charlie Parker, and I, I loved what he said to somebody one time. He said, "Well, I can't dance to your music." He says, "He says I'm he says I'm not I'm I'm an artist, not a performer. If you want to dance, go go somewhere else." Yeah, you know, <laughs> that was rather good. And then uh, of course the great Charlie Mingus, you know, just. And these are these are not things that necessarily give me direction myself, but I listen to them because they're beautiful, and I go, "Wow, that's great! I, I could never do anything like that, but it's so fantastic." And then I just do my own work, and then if I've heard something that's come into my head that comes out, I may not even notice it. You know, things, everything comes in. You take everything in, and then things come out, and you lay them down. And every now and again, you bumped into somebody because, well, you, you do a lot of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, w I was talking to you before that I, I came across your work and your music. Well, I knew your music a little bit, but uh, recently, your I, you know, Misty, uh, David Sylvian ended up releasing his 10 CD box with a book, and uh, yeah, and it has a wonderful folder with your art. So feel free to a lot of questions on that. Feel free how you end up. And uh, meeting David, or how David came across your work and, and your music, and so on. So we'll feel free to elaborate on that. It's all luck, isn't it? Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not luck in the world. Well, one know. of the really interesting things here yeah. is that David yeah. put out an album years ago yeah. called Oil on Canvas. <laughs> okay. Correct. Yeah. And on the front of that, and I didn't know about this until we yeah. was doing this, right? On the front of that was a painting by Frank Auerbach. Frank Auerbach was my painting teacher, okay? And wow. David, David did not know that. And then I, told, I, said, and he, I said, that's really interesting, David. I said, here's another connection between us. I said, Frank Auerbach was my painting teacher. And he said, no. I said, yeah. He said, well, that's, that's about as ironic as you can get. And then he that's you know, told me how he'd bought one of uh, Auerbach's drawings for 2,000 pounds when he was you know, young, not having a, a hell of a lot of money. And uh, he said it was a lot of money then, he said, but I had to have it. He says, um, he says unfortunately, I sold it a long time ago. But uh, I, I thought that was really kind of an interesting final connection there, In even though we had never personally met, that oh. there were all these connections all the way down the line, you know. And he had been, you know, even before, I mean, he'd, he'd, he'd sent to a friend of mine very, very complimentary uh, comments about my work, you know, completely um, you know, unasked for, just out of the blue. And I, and I just sort of looked and went, you know, that's, it, it's worth working. If you, if you can touch somebody, I don't know them, they don't know me. It's, it's just a work. I said, that's, that's kind of good. Because it's easy to have friends of yours and you say, Oh, I, I love that album you put out. Well, they're friends. He goes, what are you going to say? I hate that album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course not. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. But, you know, when you've got someone that you, you don't know who they are, you know, there's no advantage to them to say anything at all. Say something, you know, nice about the work you do. It's, 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 it makes it worth continuing, you know. It really does. It's, it's really nice. It's better than getting a whole pile of money. I mean, I don't need a whole pot of money. I mean, I'm okay. I ain't rich, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay. So mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing doesn't worry me that much, you know. But mm -hmm. that, that kind of comment, you know, just out of the blue, you know, was yeah. I thought was was really nice, and I really appreciated it. Do you, you know who he was? I mean, some years ago before you start. No. No. Yeah. No, I, I I found out from because uh, I you know, I found out from my friend uh, from uh, Jamie Drawen because he knew yeah. him. he was a, a guy that grew up in the eighties. He's fifty, thirty years younger than me, but he yeah he knew yeah. all all the the, the music in the, from the eighties. It was the same as yeah. I told you about Freddie Mercury. I had no idea. 
that of that. Right, that's what he wants. Wow. Yeah, no idea. You know, and David, no, no idea. You know, we were walking down the street one time and Jamie said to me, oh, look, there's a book of photographs there by David Sylvian. And I said, well, who the hell is David Sylvian? You know, <laughs> I, went, I, uh, duh, I don't know anything. I'm just a dumb English <laughs> from London, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was, and, and it was, it was from there. So it was, it was really quite, I like that kind of discovery. I mean, if I'd known who he was from the early pop music days, you know, then it wouldn't have been mm. quite as a surprise to suddenly find or oh, gee let me let me listen to this yeah 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 i i really enjoyed obviously we talked before right so i really enjoyed uh david silver work as a musician and uh yeah and you know with before you know he was with J japan he formed a band with his brother and two other guys that i ended up interviewing and then um and also he worked with Ryushi Sakamoto from Japan that yeah, that yeah. right died recently. And plus he kept done a lot of stuff on his own and with Robert Freep and other bands and so on so forth. But uh, he's uh he's a very good musician actually, you know. Oh yeah. He worked with Derek um, Bailey. I love Derek Bailey's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh it's a good I I know you say before, well it's an accent. I d I don't believe in accent, man. Eventually so <laughs> it's very uh, how can I say this? Uh, it's very easy, very difficult to connect the dot going forward. Yeah. Right. But it's very easy to connect the dot going backwards, if you will. You know, if you haven't have that teacher and, and, uh, you know, uh, your master and then, you know, David even had, have not bought that painting for that guy and you, you yeah. will see it. So somehow it's, magic. it's really, yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing how, how these things happen, you know, and he's, as I say, he's been, he's been, very generous with his with his uh, uh, comments to me and, and you know using my work on his on his uh, albums. He I mean he sure as hell didn't have to do it, you know. But that I thought was really really nice, and I I I love to see that. I just got my copy. The box just arrived last week. Yeah, I got mine too. It's unbelievable. Very very good stuff. Yeah, I mean every cent that you know come from Sylvia is is a special pretty like like your work, you know. So it's it. Are you um? I was looking at your painting on the website. And I'm interested in getting a couple of the small ones, so we need to. I need to ping you back, you know, with an email to get a couple oh. of them. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting stuff, man. Is it is it difficult to make a, a decent living? I mean, because you oh, know, yeah. some people, some people are, you know, you're eighty, you're in very good shape, your memory works fine, you're doing a lot of work, you're energetic, you. Having to be with a lot of people over the world, it's, you're in very good shape, man. So other people oh, say, yeah. "Hey, I'm 60. I want to retire. I want to drink beer. I want to move to, from this country. This and that." You're you're very active. You're working. You're doing. You know, maybe making. Well, I mean, everything fine. everything aches now, but uh, yeah. for some reason, yeah, my mind still seems fine. I, I tend to forget people's names, but I mean, we yeah. all do. But it, it, it's interesting because. Uh, uh, David actually asked me one time, well, not that long ago, he said, uh, you know, because he's, what is he now, 65 or whatever, and he said, he said, oh, you know, he says, how, he says, how, are, you, how, how are you doing? What was it like when you were 65, you know, 64, 65? I said, well, David, I don't want to appear like an ass, but <laughs> when I was 64, I was training for triathlon races. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were his response? Just, back a big smile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That unfortunately had to come to an end. When I got to 65, I, 65, 66, I started getting, you know, the, the sort of pains you get inside your bones and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, okay, we've got to stop doing that. First, I stopped running, you know, and then I got my wrists and things. So I stopped cycling. I've still got my racing bike sitting here. And then the only thing I had left was swimming. And guess what happens? I get pneumonia. I went, oh, geez. Okay, no more swimming. Now it's walking. Now we just walk. <laughs> what do you think is the, the importance of art, painting, or sculptural in society in general? It's, it's, it, it's fundamental. It's needed. It's a way for human being to express themselves via painting versus music versus a book. Or how do you think the value of art in society? Well, it's know? like you know. I mean, 
people have got to have something that's not just about you know working for a living and just they can pay rent you know and that, i mean it's i mean it's really what makes us human is you know this ability to you know, to take a language and make this make a make a, a poem from it or this or a, a novel or a story or you know um produce sort of you know visual works or or you know music or sound or you know anything i mean these are the things that that that, that really uh, that to me make life worthwhile i mean if the only if the only thing there was was you know um programming a computer all day you know or you know well even you know i was going to say building a house but i used to like building houses because carpentry is kind of a although it's sort of an exact it's i i, I enjoyed doing that because i enjoyed the, the cutting and everything else but but the idea of um, being able to sort of just pull something out of your out of your head, you know, that's been it's got there through all of your experiences, all of your looking, listening, everything else, and manage to put it somewhere so that somebody else can see it or hear it. I think is is really what is the sort of magical thing about life. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. I mean, any internal music. Any uh, any new project that you're working on nowadays? <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually waiting for a package from from Gil Sanson in in Venezuela. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's got something else for me to do. And what else am I? Oh yeah, I I, I in the studio here. I've a I've a young uh, young thirties thirty five uh, guitarist, but he also designs synths and all kinds of things. He's real really. Uh, deep into the whole music and music theory and everything can read everything whatever and he comes here and uh i hadn't seen him for a few years we did uh we did an album together his name is dan godlovich we did an album together um which included gil sanson a couple of years two three years back but you know he sort of said you know we need to get together again. I said, well, yeah. I said, but you have to come over you know, at least once a week or once every two weeks. I said, because when we first start, I says, I have no idea what I'm doing or what I'm going to do. And I said, I always like to start with a notion that I don't have a clue what I'm doing because generally I don't, you know, it's like, okay, let's sit down here. And what he's working with is he's, he's using a, um, uh, an empty uh, off the track sampler. Okay. He comes in, there's nothing on it. He plugs it in. And it's up to me to create the chaos, right? So, you know, I'll he'll plug it in. I say, we're ready to go. Don't forget to press record. We've been through that one before, doing entire performances, and you look and you hadn't pressed record. You sort of go, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's. So, and, and then, I'll, you know, I might just pick up, you know, I just take off my glasses. I, you know, and then he's got that, and then I just, and so it it develops just from simple things. Now, the first whole set, you know, I just you know, go, yeah, no, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And then the next time he comes, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've done a little bit of thinking, I'm moving things, playing with things, and slowly one builds up a, a palette of of sounds and things, you know. So that's what I'm working on right now. It might it might take us a year to get to get what we want, you know. I just have to stay alive long enough to do all these things. That's the thing, you know. We're in very good shape, man. Don't say yeah. that. Sounds yeah, good. I, I'm okay. I mean I, I can't I can't uh, I mean when I was 64 years old I could I could run 10 kilometers in 41 minutes. Wow. Well, impressive, right, man. right now I doubt that I could walk one kilometer in 41 minutes. <laughs> so I'm a lot slower now. But you yeah. know, what the heck? You know, I, I, every time I've stopped looking at my old school friends or anything like that, because every time I look up there, oh, well, he died 12 years ago. I go, oh, I'm going to stop looking for people. Yeah, you know, that's right. That's they're right. They're all that's in the right. ground. Stop looking. You know, that's right. Feel free to uh, mention your um, your website, Lance, where people are listening to this podcast can buy your painting, your music, and your channel in Bad Camp, whatever. Feel, feel free to mention that. So I will oh, put the links on the on the well, interview. That's great. Yeah. Well, our our sort of gallery website, which which also links to to um, in frequency uh, Bandcamp and all that kind of things. It's it's in frequency yeah. org. Yeah. yeah. And I'll I'll actually send you that too. You know, yeah. And it, 
It's got a link tree and it'll link you to, um, you know, yeah. to the gallery. It links and that gallery links to my website. Yeah. And, and, and we're always changing that because, you know, we're, we're, as my buddy Jamie says, you know, there's no point just putting up a website and leaving it there. He says, we've got to try and sell some of these things on here. So we just keep changing them around, you know. And I said, that's fair enough. You know, it's a good thing to do. And it also uh, gets me to photograph uh, things properly as opposed to, you know, not very well and putting them up. You know, you know Jamie's a, a, is a photographer and he says, you cannot put that up. Bring those over. I'll photograph them properly. So that's always been good for me. So I get good documentation of work. You know? Yeah. <laughs> good for you, man. Hey, Lance, it was very, very nice talking to you. And hopefully I will, you know, meet you one day. I'm interested in a couple of your stuff as well. I will send you an email and uh, say hello to David Silva when you talk to him. And it was very nice I talking to you. I will. You're, you're, and, you're very good at your... Quiet, humble, but you're very good at what you do for a living. Right? Well, I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but but I'll, I'll send you um, the 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 links to the gallery and the websites, and that would be kind of nice if you mention them. You of know, course, got, I will. I will. Yeah, uh, I will. Uh, we got a couple of things coming out. I'm working on some uh, series of uh, eight by eight um, books, which are just drawings, and then yeah. have an original print in, and they're they're relatively inexpensive, you know, because you know the, the paintings are expensive. I can't give them away, but we try and put out stuff that somebody who's got 120 bucks can actually afford it, you know? Yeah. But on the other hand, they cannot have a 10 foot painting that's taken me a lifetime for 120 bucks. I'd sooner burn that's it. Right. <laughs> well, you have the stuff for 300, 700, 3000, 8000. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, different price Absolutely. ranges. So everybody could, some rich people could afford a day grand, you know, some people Absolutely. could afford only 500, whatever, you know, so it's but it, very good stuff. And, and, uh, Keep on working hard. I'm quite sure that we'll do a follow-up interview very soon, Lance. And it was very nice uh, talking to you, man. Well, it was nice talking to you. And thank you very much. And I will send you those things. And uh, Okay, I'll, great. I'll, I'll for you. Have a great evening, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.